Hello, lovely humans. Jen Foxbot here for another exciting edition of STEM Bites, where we tackle all of your seemingly simple questions about science, tech, engineering, and math. All right. Today's question comes from Physics Penguin. Are you ready? Physics Penguin's got a good one for us. Okay. Da, 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 da. Take a second to get the puppet on my finger. <laughs> Physics Penguin. <laughs> okay. Physics Penguin, would you like to share your question with the audience? Yes, please. I'm wondering, what is the biggest unsolved problem in physics today? That's a big question. I know. Sorry about that. That's okay. I like these kinds of questions. So first, caveat. This is kind of my personal opinion. I think it is the biggest unsolved problem in physics, but other people might disagree. So here we go. Okay. So in my opinion, the biggest unsolved problem in physics, a lot of physicists, I think, would agree with this. But I think that it's the discrepancy between gravity and the standard model. So right now, the theory of gravity and the standard model, which is like the periodic table for particle physics, um, the standard model describes the forces and particles on the subatomic level. So things like electrons, protons, neutrons, quarks, uh, neutrinos, light, all of that stuff. Gravity and the standard model do not agree. Pow. You can't apply the theory of gravity to the standard model and you can't apply the standard model theories to gravity because it breaks real badly, like an order of magnitude of like 10 to the hundredth. That's how badly they don't agree. So if you're like, boom, mind blown, and you want to bow out and you're done, that's cool. But let's get into it a little bit. What does this actually mean? Okay, so gravity, gravity is the theory that, you know, Einstein is really, really famous for, but it's also made a lot of predictions, things like black holes. Um, and gravity is the theory that um, it's, it's the force that acts on objects at very, very large distances. Very, very large objects with a lot of mass at very, very large distances over a lot of time. Um, so for example, gravity is responsible for us, you know, being pulled towards the center of the earth. That's why we don't fly off uh, versus the moon where we can jump really high. And if we were able to jump with enough force, we might go boom, because we would overcome the force of gravity. Um, but gravity is also why the, the moon orbits the earth, um, why we're pulled towards the center of the earth, which is a good thing. Um, although sometimes you're climbing a mountain and you're like, oh, this is hard. Um, and it's also why the moon exerts a little bit of gravity on earth, hence the tides. That is the moon be like, I have mass, I pull some things too, which is great because tides are helpful. Um, but gravity when you go down to really, really small scales, when you're talking about things like particles, so electrons, protons, neutrons, quarks, all that fun stuff that I mentioned earlier, gravity doesn't really have an effect. Well, number one, it's very, very, very weak at those scales. It doesn't impact the way that particles interact. It's kind of like um, if you were at a party and the house is really crowded and you're bumping around all those people, those are all the particles. Um, and maybe like the, the larger, um, traffic happening in your city doesn't impact you, right? Because you're not in, stuck in traffic. You're at the party bumping around and jostling around. Not sure how I feel about the traffic, but the party one, okay, hang, hang in there with me. Um, so yes, the standard model, standard model is over here. Do, 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 do. And this deals with forces like, um, well, like light, <laughs> the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force. Yeah, fun. So this describes, this force describes how light moves um, and, well, how electricity works and how uh, magnetism works. It turns out they're the same force. You also have the weak, the weak nuclear force. which is responsible for particles decaying. So things like radioactivity is probably what we're most familiar with, but really all particles decay and break down over time. 
Low protons take a very, 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 very long time. Um, and then you also have the strong nuclear force. And this is what is responsible for holding uh, quarks together. So protons and neutrons exist because of the strong nuclear force. The nucleus of an atom exists because of the strong nuclear force. Um, and so this is, well, as we would expect, the strongest force, but it only um, is super, super strong and very, very short distances and very, very small time scales. And then the strength kind of weakens as you go up, but also the distance at which they're strong uh, expands. Um, and so on this side, uh, you have gravity, which influences on like what, you know, the size of solar systems, right? And this is where things are really, really small. And you cannot apply the two, which is pretty wild to me. Um, Jan Levin, who is a, a famous theoret theoretical cosmologist, I think, uh, she hypothesizes that gravity doesn't actually exist in the way that it's its own force. Uh, she believes that it might be, or one theory is that it could be a manifestation of all the weirdness happening at really, really, really small time scales. Time and space at scales, because it's kind of the same thing, it's a little bit different. Um, spooky. So personally, I kind of subscribe to that because it's really wonky that gravity and the standard model don't agree. Really, one of them has to be wrong, which is wild because both have withstood like a century of poking and prodding and testing and experimenting. Um, and both have had a lot of predictions that have come to be valid. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that gravity is wrong, that the theory of gravity is wrong. It just means that our picture of it is incomplete. And we, do, we definitely know that our picture of both of these is incomplete. So, but something big is gonna have to give. And personally, I think it might be gravity because it's really hard for us to poke at gravity, right? Because it's in such big scales that we have to come up with these elaborate ways to and, and wait and be very patient to study distant galaxies and black holes and things like that. So kudos to all of the astrophysicists and, and folks that are studying those things because it's hard. Anyway, so that is to <laughs> physics penguins. <laughs> Delightful question, in my opinion the biggest unsolved problem in physics. All right, let me know if you have any questions about what we've chatted about. If there's anything up here that you wanna dig deeper into because I scratched the surface a little bit and hopefully like gave you some tantalizing tidbits to go learn more about. And feel free to ask me to dive into any of those because I love this stuff. All right, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.